Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Carolina Weather Authority meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg. No shave November came to an end. The beard has survived into December. <laughs> uh, it's probably going to be gone, I think, by the end of the year, but uh, wifey's giving me a little bit more permission to keep it, and my two-year-old daughter is uh, enjoys combing it with her pink hairbrush. I think it's got a unicorn on it or something, but anyway... <laughs> Uh, let me know in the comments if, if you're cool with it or if you're not or whatever. I mean, I'm probably going to do what I'm going to do anyway, but just give you something else to talk about. But anyway, let's get to the weather here. Let's talk about the December storm pattern, which is shaping up to be a little bit more active, unfortunately. Because I know we'd all love to enjoy some nice weather, but what we're getting are more wild temperature swings and more heavy rainfall. And uh, November in my house in Raleigh got almost eight and a half inches of rain. December looks like it's going to be wet, but maybe not that extreme. Um, but we, yeah, definitely got more to talk about, and I'll get to that here in just a second. If you could do us a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel, we appreciate you for that, and invite your friends to do so as well. We do have a website, carolinawxauthority.com, with some articles talking about temperatures here, and definitely it's gotten colder, uh, and we've seen more winter weather in parts of the Carolinas, but here in Raleigh, uh, nothing that, nothing more than, a uh, what was a nice frosty morning. Uh, very frosty, believe it or not. All right, so our next storm system um, doesn't look very impressive on radar right now. Um, did produce a lot of rain in the Houston area and just offshore of the Gulf of Mexico uh, yesterday, and today it's now shifted to the east, um, affecting Plattsmouth Parish in Louisiana. Um, but what's going to happen is we have a cutoff low here in Oklahoma that's going to draw this moisture northward, and we do have ourselves some unsettled and very wet weather coming um, at the end of the week into the start of the weekend. So if your outdoor plans... Um, tomorrow night or Saturday morning involve you being out for a while, you want to have your radar handy because we are going to be seeing some unsettled weather moving east here into the Carolinas and then up the coast for Saturday as well. Uh, the severe weather threat does not look super high. Um, the last system, believe it or not, things didn't quite pan out the way we thought they would. Um, just uh, timing differences, low pressure track changes at the last minute. Um, so we did have some threat for tornadoes that didn't really... Um, transpire here in the Carolinas ended up happening farther north Monday afternoon. We had some tornadoes in Maryland and Pennsylvania, uh, nothing too strong, but we did have the wind and we definitely had the cold air and we had the snowflakes flying Monday afternoon and night back in the high country. And I think up to close to a foot was recorded in Mount LeConte, which is right on the Tennessee, North Carolina border near Clingman's Dome uh, in the Smoky Mountain Range. So more snow coming for those areas here in the next couple of weeks for sure. Uh, but farther east, I uh, don't want to promise that to you at this point. You know, we, we have the cold, we've got the unsettled weather, the big storms, but we don't have the timing that can put everything together the way we'd love to see. doesn't mean something couldn't change in the short term, but right now the models are not, uh, they're not looking too impressed. Let's just put it that way. Uh, here is Saturday, and notice how the uh, threat for storms comes up the coast, but it's going to be falling apart earlier on in the day, and then the system transitions into a, what could be a pretty good nor'easter farther off to the north. Um, and the threat is uh, going to continue for heavy rain, unfortunately, the rest of the month. Uh, La Nina typically means a, a milder and a not-so-stormy pattern here in the southeast, but we are seeing some of the teleconnections showing that um, not all of that is, is necessarily the rule. We do have uh, more of an unsettled progressive weather pattern where storms are coming up quite a bit right through the Appalachians. That brings a warm air up the east coast and then follows with wild temperature swings and much colder air. Uh, what it means is it's going to be very wet on the Gulf Coast, uh, across uh, the Florida Panhandle, straight up through the Appalachians, and right up the East Coast through the rest of the month. You can see on the European, some spots may pick up over six inches of rain the rest of this month. Um, some of these will end up being snow as well, so it could be a pretty good uh, snowfall in the interior of the Northeast, as well as maybe in the Smokies, parts of the Blue Ridge, and the Central Appalachians. So, we have a lot of that to talk about for sure. Uh, latest GFS shows our low pressure system forming here in the next 24 hours. It'll form in Georgia tomorrow, and what will happen is this upper low here is going to drive that moisture coming out of the Gulf and actually right out of the Western Caribbean where it's still wet, but no tropical trouble expected for the time being. It looked like a few weeks ago maybe that would happen, and uh, a little too much wind shear compared to what it looked like would happen. So you've got two features here. You've got a northern branch feature that's uh, pushing down through the eastern Great Lakes tomorrow afternoon and a southern branch feature, and once a two-phase, we have a pretty good chance of a big storm in the northeast. But the problem is um, the low-pressure track is too far north and west to really get us to enjoy anything more than heavy rain and thunderstorms here in the Carolinas and southeast. And notice this rain could move in um, by early evening in places like Charlotte and Columbia, 
Uh, if you're in South Carolina, the high school state uh, championship football games are, could be impacted by rain and thunderstorms Friday evening. Um, and then the storm Saturday should be moving out of here. So that is some good news. Uh, but really a lot of rain coming up to the east of the Appalachians. So the Shenandoah Valley right on through the Delmarva and right up into New England, we've got a threat for heavy rain. Um, the only way this goes over the snow faster and farther east is if this low ends up farther offshore, but I will say that the models continue to correct farther northwest. The reason why is look how warm the water temperatures are with respect to average. The models um, tend to forecast a storm track and then they correct as we get closer to the event when they start to see, oh wait, that water is actually warmer than we think. That means um, the pressures are going to end up being a little bit higher um, over the coastal waters and then lower inland. And what that means is that temperatures do not drop fast enough for this precipitation and as much snow. Uh, but uh, this is the GFS, and notice um, we've got another system that drops down, another upper-level feature here that may bring some lighter precipitation on Monday. But um, at this point, looking at this low-pressure track doesn't look like it's going to do anything frozen uh, outside of the mountains here in the Appalachians. So it's colder, but it's not cold enough uh, for everything to line up and us to get an East Coast storm. Uh, the storm after it uh, is going to form farther northwest on the 11th, and then next weekend uh, we could have another trough dropping down, bringing cold air all the way down to the Gulf. A lot of wind and cold, but it looks like rain and thunderstorms once again here next weekend. And then that could follow with yet another system that does kind of the same thing. Um, and this run of the GFS really blows up this low into something major and brings enough warm air up the coast for snow to change to rain in the St. Lawrence Valley, so that could be interesting as well. But look how cold it'll get. Um, here, if this is right, around the 16th and 17th of the month. Uh, so if I could summarize the eastern United States, especially here in the Carolinas, where many of you guys are coming in from, it's that December overall is cold up until about Christmas time, then it's milder. Um, but we have uh, kind of some back and forth temperature swings, which will average colder than normal. Uh, but we will still see enough warm air to come in right ahead of these storms where it's mild and humid. So uh, expect to run your air conditioner maybe one or two more times, and then the heat right after it. Uh, big 20, 30 degree temperature swings, which I know for those of us health-wise, that's definitely not preferred. Um, it can certainly cause more issues with respiratory uh, symptoms and things like that. So just something you need to be aware of at this point. But yeah, we, we will definitely see a lot of snow in the northern Rockies and quite a bit across uh, interior parts of the northeast as well as the Great Lakes region as these storm tracks continue to come up through and just to the east of the Appalachians, and right up through the Piedmont and into eastern parts of Quebec. But unfortunately, those storm tracks do not mean um, cold enough air is going to make it and line up with the rain for us to have a big snowfall, I don't think anyway, over uh, parts of the coastal southeast and uh, deep south for that matter as well, Louisiana and Texas. Um, you can see uh, this cold air is already starting to retreat um, two weekends from now around the 19th. And the week leading up to Christmas looks like it's going to be milder. I'm not going to say beautifully sunny and 70 every day, but definitely won't be as cold as what we're experiencing in the next couple of weeks. I uh, did want to show you again real quick um, the European showing our storm chances here and timing that out for you real fast. Looks like, uh, you know, there could be some thunder in the evening Friday night and then it kind of wanes and then picks back up in the eastern Carolinas later in the evening. This was the 6Z run, but the latest run is a little farther back with the threat for some lightning strikes. So uh, don't be surprised completely if we see some thunderstorms late in the evening, even into the overnight across the Carolinas, and then moving out of here first thing in the morning on Saturday and then coming up the East Coast. Uh, but I did want to show you all, <laughs> this is the uh, the fun part here, the Kushera method of the snowfall. Uh, we could see a little snow on the backside here, maybe up to an inch, maybe even a little more. And then Sunday night, kind of a second wave comes through. Um, and this one could get kind of interesting in Virginia if the European is right, but the GFS did not show that happening, by the way. Um, but I think down here in the Carolinas, not looking too likely to see any snow, although this kind of excites me a little bit more than what I saw before. Um, but if we head on up into New England, look at the uh, totals we're talking about here. Uh, two feet in some places in Maine and New Hampshire in the presidential range could see quite a bit. Um, Boston could even see a tiny bit of snow on the back edge of this. Um, the trend has actually been a little farther east. Uh, because this was two model runs ago, it had all the heavy snow back in Vermont, but 32 inches of snow uh, is a pretty big snowstorm. Could be a, almost a blizzard up in this area and here, uh, but the model's trending with the European farther east with each run. This was the 6Z, and now the 12Z is a little closer to the coast. So we're going to have to see if it plays out that way. Um, one thing for sure, I don't think New York City and on south are going to see any snow out of this, uh, at least nothing that measures up to anything. 
Um, so the the drought for the winter weather continues. We've just got a couple winters here where we just really can't see much happening. Of course, that'll be the case too here down across the rest of the mid-Atlantic and southeast region. All right, folks. Well, that's all I've got for you with this video, but if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, I do appreciate it. Uh, Mike and I will be back with more. Please follow us on Facebook as well for the latest, and I hope you all have a wonderful, blessed day. See you soon.